Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Fresco, expansions 8, 9, and 10. The Bells, the Wall Fresco, and the Mediso, which is an expansion, as you might imagine, for the base game Fresco, which is one of Jens and my favorite games. And I'm going to be doing a run through of just the new content in this expansion. So first of all, I should warn you right up front, if you don't know your way around Fresco, this run through might not make a lot of sense. You might want to go check out my original run through. You can hit the little eye up in the top right corner of the screen and learn some of the basics of Fresco. But if you know Fresco and you're just curious, what are the bells, the wall Fresco and the Mediso all about? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm going to just run through one round and hopefully try to demonstrate what all is added to the game. And this is actually going to be the third round of the game. I've actually just done a quick playthrough of the first couple of rounds to get a game going. Going. And now I'm going to demonstrate, starting with this third round, what do these new elements offer to the game? Well, let's just take a quick tour. First of all, there is this bell board over here. The bishop, in addition to wanting everything else, now wants a new shiny church bell for his cathedral. And he has asked us to make financial donations to the fund to get this bell made. And so the church bell is two things. One, it's a way for us to convert money into points. Now in the base game, of course, at the end of the game, it's, what is it, two for one. Every dollar is basically worth a half a point. But during the game now, we have a new action. We can basically take this little board, cover up any of our existing actions, and you'll notice we don't have to put a worker on here. So this is basically, whenever we want to make a donation to the bell, it's like we get an extra apprentice. So if I put this here, that means this turn, when we get to the, to the, the portrait painting part, instead of me painting portraits, I will donate money to the bell fund. And as you can see in this third round, there's this one over here, which gets five points for six bucks spent. And this other one over here, which is one point for one buck, which is nowhere near as exciting. But either way, you can see these are so much better because these are close to, if not exactly one to one. So they're a much better use of your money than turning your money into points at the end of the game. Now, as part of setup, Leonardo, the, the dummy player in a two-player game, he's already laid claim to four certificates. So at the end of the game, we'll find out what he bought. And at the end of the game, you know, in addition to scoring points all the way through, at the end of the game, everybody will reveal how many bells, how many of these the bells are on the certificates they bought. Whoever, and we'll use this as a little score track, and whoever did the most is going to get nine bonus points. Whoever contributed the next most, again, of these little bells gets five, and third most gets two. And so Leonardo is actually a viable candidate, depending on what ones he, you know, he might have got a lot, he might not have gotten very much at all. And in fact, actually, the bishop himself competes in this because any of these bell certificates that we as players didn't contribute to, the bishop will pick up the rest. So there, no matter whether it's a two, three, or four player game, um, you know, there's always going to be four or five with the bishop in a four player game, people competing for bonus points at the end of the game. Plus, if you get a certain number of bells, just crossing these thresholds gives you points. So the, there's, a, there's a new way to spend money in town and it can convert to a lot of points depending on how you've done. And in this game I've been playing so far, in the first two rounds, this is the main thing I focused on. I've just been making lots of money off portraitures and then I bought two really expensive ones. I paid eight bucks to get seven points and I paid six bucks to get six points. And you can see right now I've got, what is that, five, six, seven, eight. I'm already, although this won't be revealed until the end of the game, I'm up to eight on this track and I'm in a good position to compete for having contributed the most to the bell fund at the end of the game. All right, next up is the wall fresco over here, which is another way that we can paint uh, spend paint cubes to score points. Uh, these are, it's much simpler to do the wall fresco. You need, you know, level twos, oranges, greens, and purples. But if you have one, you just spend it and boom, you get four points straight out, which is pretty good. Uh, and more to the point, once you get this, you flip this and you find out what's on the other side, this becomes new paint income for you for the rest of the game. So remember there's in the base game, one of the expansions is the Bishop's Favor that lets you get paint income. This gives you paint income very simply and very easily. And so far in this game, Jen hasn't gone for any bells, but she has gotten two. She's bought, she's uh, worked on two spots of this fresco. And so she's already got income of one blue and one red every turn because she did a purple and she did a green. You never know exactly what your income is going to be until you flip the thing and find out. Okay, so there's that one. And then finally over here, there's the Mediso, where if your apprentices get sick, you can buy medicine to heal them. And what's that all about? Well, you may notice, I've here's my five apprentices. One of them has been swapped with this little um, sickly looking fellow. 
this guy um, is not as effective as my other apprentices. In fact, he can get my other apprentices sick too. The, 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 the fever he's got can spread. But, you know, so it's bad enough one of my apprentices has fallen ill. Two of Jen's have fallen ill so far. She's only got three, and she's got two unhealthy ones. Now, that's because every round we will be surprised to find out what the sickly, plague-ridden part of town is. In the first round, it was the paint mixing, which Jen went and did. I didn't paint mix, so Jen got hit and she got one of her apprentices sick. In the second round, it was the, um, the market where we went to buy paints. Both of us were there, and so that's how I got one, and Jen got her second. And so, over time, every round, there's going to be another one of these revealed that is a place that if anybody sent an apprentice there, that apprentice has the chance that, you know, will get sick. Um, but every round, medicine is available for sale. And the amount of medicine that comes up randomly is equal to the number of players who have at least one sick apprentice. So in a two-player game, since both Jen and I have a, at least one sick apprentice, two medicines have come out. Now this one costs three bucks. This can heal one apprentice. And this one costs two bucks. This won't heal anybody. This is raspberry juice. And you can drink it to improve your mood by two. It's like um, in spending money to improve your mood rather than spending time to go to the, what do you call it, the, the theater to improve your mood. So. That's all the new stuff you can see, and, and here's Jen's, uh, you know, we, she swapped out when her guys went sick. She swapped out her apprentices over here for the sick ones. Okay, so that's the situation, and here's a little reminder of what sick apprentices can't do. Sick apprentices cannot go to the market at all, nor can they go to the theater. They can work in the fresco, they can do portraits, and they can mix paints, but all at reduced efficiency, and they cannot be put on any module spaces, like, you know, this one, which is the wall fresco, require a, a, a sick apprentice cannot be put on this space. All right, so that's the situation. We're ready to start the third. The market's already been set up. New medicine came out. New bells showed up. And so we're ready to go. Now, everybody, of course, puts their screen up, plans in secret. I'm just going to go ahead and do it right now. So let's see. And I think what I'm going to do... Now, my sick guy, I cannot send... Like I said, I can't send him to the market or the theater. What I think I'll do with him is I'll send him over here to mix some paints. And what that means is normally uh, when you send an apprentice to mix paints, they can do two mix actions. A sick guy can only do one. But you know what? I don't have a lot of paint, so I don't really mind if I only do one action. I'll probably just mix these things up so I can get a green. Because the other thing I'm going to do is uh, after I've mixed my paints, I am going to use this. I'm not going to go to the theater. Instead, I'm going to um, send a guy here so that I'll mix paints and then this guy will take the mixed paints and will actually get me um, working on the wall fresco so I can start getting some paint to come. Oh wait, what about, actually before I actually do all this, before we actually plan our day, we have to figure out who is going to get up and win. I totally forgot about that. Let's see. Now I just, it's the third round, so I just ended up with Leonardo. But Jen's in last place, so she chooses for herself first. And then Lee, I choose for Leonardo and I choose for myself. And what's Jen going to do? You know what? Wow, is Jen going? One, two, I think so. Jen's going to make a very ballsy move because she's got these two sick guys. And you'll notice Jen is already kind of getting towards grumpiness. Jen's going to push that. She's going to go crazy into the grump zone. She's going to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Now that lowers her mood by 2. 1, 2. And normally in the base game, that's just nothing but bad because you lose a worker. But here's a new wrinkle. Jen's going to lose a worker. It's going to be one of these sickos. So, um, you know, he was not a particularly valuable guy anyway. And now the interesting thing is, um, Jen takes a sicko, gets this one back, and now this is her, um, her guide that she can't use. So, one of, the, one of the ways to get rid of, you know, to cure people is to actually buy the medicine. The other way is to get yourself so cranky and pissed off that you say, to heck with you, cold, I'm just, you know. And so, Jen is basically, you know, shaking the cold. Now, she still can't use this guy, but she's grumpy. But now she's down to only one. So, Jen shows for herself, and now I've got to choose for myself and Leonardo. Um... Hmm. Well, I don't want to get up crazy early, so I guess I'll just sleep in and I will get ever closer to the blissful happiness. And um, yeah, because I've been using most of my mo all my money so far has been going into bells. So if I let's see, do I want to do another bell this turn? Let's see. I know I'm going to try and mix paints to do a wall fresco. 
Do I want to get up earlier than Jen and have to pay four bucks to get some paint? I don't think I want to. That's just a bit too expensive. So I'll sleep in. I'll buy something. I will definitely go to the market with my healthy guy. I'll get something and it only cost me one buck. Let's see. And I'm definitely going to, what do you call it? Do some more uh, portraits so I can make more money because I think I'm going to try and get another bell. Let's see. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can afford this big, um, delicious bell. Uh, well, if I pay six bucks, I'll get five points and I'll be that much closer to bell dominance. So that means I'm not going to work on the fresco at all this turn. I've replaced that with a free action. I get to do a bell. And let's see, and I could still do one more action. I think I'll just make some more money. Uh, you know, get, just get doing money for portraits, even if you don't have the special power stuff, just making money off portraits is so much more powerful now than it was in the base game because of these bells, because you can convert money into points so readily. So anyway, so that's what I did. Now, Jen, she, of course, had to plan as well. She's only got four guys. And what is she going to do? Hmm, so she's still got this grump. Well, you know what? Jen has been kind of bummed how I have been monopolizing the bell so far. So I think she's going to do a bell as well. And let's see. And what action is she going to do? What, is she, what else does she want to do? Hmm. Now she could. She could try to cure this other guy by instead of going to the market and you know getting one, two, or three paint swatches or cubes, she could use this new market tile, which means she could only get one paint cube, but she also, she doesn't have to spend a guy here. There's a guy already here. She can spend money to get medicine. So she could spend three bucks, get this other medicine, and cure her other sick guy. Now at the end of the game, every sick guy you've got basically loses you five points. So you definitely want to lose these guys. Plus they limit you in what you can do. What else is Jen going to do? Hmm. Oh, Jen is definitely going to mix some paints. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely going to mix some paints. You know what? Since she's really depressed herself, I, she's definitely going to go to the theater so she can cheer herself back up so she can get her new healthy apprentice back. Hmm. She's already got a lot of money, so I don't know if she wants... Let's see, does she want to? Yeah, I think she will work. Um, actually, yeah. She'll, this guy who is effectively limited, she'll have him go and paint on the fresco. Now, a guy who's limited, who's sick painting on the fresco, his limit is the bishop doesn't want him anywhere nearby. So, wherever the bishop is, Jen cannot paint anywhere Jason. So, because the bishop's here, Jen can only paint in these outer areas. That's the limit. The limit if you send a sick guy to do a portrait is they can still do a portrait, but instead of just making three bucks like normal, they have to give up a cube to give up some paint to make three bucks. So they don't do a family portrait, they do a portrait of a saint. So they, it, costs, it needs extra paint, and so they end up having to give up a cube to make some money. So Jen could do that. Coming over here, like I did, means she could only paint one. But no, I think, because what could Jen do? She's got two big greens and blues and reds. So, ah, over here, this five, this green, blue, red, that's perfect. That's really far away from the bishop. So Jen will be able to do that. So she'll send this sick guy who, you know, and now the other thing is, um, sick guy can't even, you can't bribe the bishop to move him around or anything like that. You're really limited because the bishop just doesn't want to hear from this sick guy. Let's see. And so Jen's still got one more. You know what? I think she'll make some more money because right off the bat, well, then her last question is, is she going to buy some more medicine so she can heal her other guy or is she because she's got a lot of money and she's about to make some more money is she going to get a bell because right now i've been running away with the bells and there's a lot of points to be had there i think jen is going to say you know what <sighs> a, a, a potion that's only one she's not a, she doesn't want to pay full price for that she's going to wait until hopefully if she's going to pay full price it can it can heal two or three guys or ideally she could get the uh, you know a second price one she doesn't want to pay full price for only one heal so i think jen's going to do her first bell contribution as well okay so everybody's chosen in secret everybody reveals all at the same time and i am shocked because jen's going to get to do the bell before i do jen made it her first action i did my second arg all right and so here we go jen Hold your horses there, buddy. Before we actually start doing those actions, I've got to interject. I totally forgot. After everybody's made their plans and everybody's revealed their plans, but before you actually do them, we reveal the next location that's going to get hit by plague. And so in this case, it's going to be the market again. That's the second time in a row. Wow. And now, 
That is bad for me because I sent a guy and he's going to get sick, but Jen doesn't mind because instead of going to the market, Jen decided to do the bells this round. So Jen completely dodged the bullet, whereas after this guy buys his paint, he's going to have to get replaced with a sicko. And the more of these you get, the worse it gets. I mean, if you ever actually have a sick apprentice do something alongside regular apprentices, they become sick as well. So you, I mean, and don't forget, every one of these is worth negative five points at the end of the game. So the more of them you get, the more you have to clean it up. And so that's going to be a problem for me during this round. I'm going to get my second sick guy. So I'm going to have two and that's just something to bear in mind. And uh, you'll, you'll remember when I, when I actually get to this point, I'm, I'm going to have forgotten to do it, but just just remember, this guy is going to get sick this round because that's just how the cookie crumbled. Heck, it could have been over um, actually trying to paint a fresco instead, or it could have been trying to mix paints again, or it could have been a repeat, you know, which actually would have, heck, if this is the next one, then um, going to the market a fourth time would be plague ridden, or doing portraits, or doing portraits. There's basically two of each of these in here, plus one repeat the previous one. And this, by the way, is another way the game end can be triggered. Instead of waiting until there's only six tiles in the display, if basically when you get down to, I think there's only one left here, that triggers the end of the game also. So anyway, sorry about that, folks. But now I think we can continue with the previously scheduled run through. Here we go. Jen woke up first. She's not going to the market. She's doing a bell. And she's going to grab that big, um, healthy $6 five pointer one that I thought I was going to get. Jen just got it instead. So now she is definitely a viable competitor for bells. She's not very far behind me and she just scored five points. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So that's what Jen did. And she didn't even have to use a worker to do it. Since she was down a worker, she decided to do the bell to make up for that. Okay. It's so now my turn. I, um, right, wait, wait, wait. Now, um, Jen's done, then Leonardo. I get to choose on behalf of Leonardo, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to get to buy one cube, and it's only going to cost me one buck. What cube am I going to buy? <clears throat> Let's see. I, oh, 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 okay. So I could go on ahead and get a green, but I'm still going to mix paint to get my green. So I don't need to go ahead and buy a green. I think I will buy... I'm just going to go ahead and pay one. I'm going to buy three red cubes. So that's what I got for myself. And I had no real competition, you know, because Leonardo cleared out this store, whatever. Um, and Jen never went. So I just got three red cubes. All right. So I'm pretty happy with that. And everybody goes back in the chicken cup. So that was it for the market. And we move on to step two. Jen is still first. So she gets to, and you can see she's first. She gets to paint. Um, in the cathedral before Leonardo does, although I control Leonardo. So Jen is, as planned, going to paint this tile up here. She had what she needed. She makes five points and, of course, increases her income. So she's made one, two, three, four, five. And it was fine. Even though it was a sick guy, he was way far away from the bishop, so she was allowed to do it. So she worked within the restrictions of using a sick guy. And now Leonardo and I get to control him. I uh, see he has to go either towards this nine or this five. Um, I don't have a lot of paint. I'll have him do this one because chances are Jen would be able to score this before I could. So Leonardo just did that. And now me, I'm going to do a bell. But you know what? There's only one left. It cost me exactly one buck, unfortunately, to get one victory point. So that slowed down my bell dominance plans. Okay. Then on to number three. Jen's going to paint a portrait. She makes three bucks. And I'm going to do twice. So I make six. All right, and Leonardo doesn't care about portraits, of course. Then we move on. So both Jen and I are mixing paints. Jen will get to go first. She's gonna mix paints twice. Um, oh, shoot. Oh, hmm, so that's kind of wasteful because you'll notice she doesn't have much she can mix because of what she is. Ah, maybe she should have gone to the markets. No, 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 she's happy with the bell. She's happy with the bell. Um, right, so. Jen could do two mixes. Now, unfortunately, she's only left with a, you, you, um, I'm not playing with the, exp uh, you know, so she can't mix a blue and a green to get anything, unfortunately. But there's another type of mixer you can do. Remember how I said in a previous turn, Jen had worked the wall fresco and she is getting every round because she did this fre wall fresco piece and this wall fresco piece, she's getting income of a blue and a red. Well, guess what? You can mix these incomes. That's what Jen's gonna do. She's gonna mix them, so these are removed, and a blue and a red converts to 
a purple. So now Jen is making one purple cube income every round and fans of Fresco know that's a huge deal. So Jen was kind of wasteful. Well, actually that's not true, that's not true. Um, a guy who comes here can either do two paint mixes or can do one of these. So this guy, instead of doing two paint mixes, he did this to convert these two into a purple. And now Jen's very happy about this purple income. Very, very nice. Okay. So that was Jen. And meanwhile, I'm going to do some mixing as well. So see, I've got everything I need. I could mix whatever I want. I guess I'll use one of these blues. Do I want to make a purple or do I want to make an orange? Well, because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint on the wall fresco. Whereas Jen, she's just going to cheer herself back up so she can get her worker back. All healed up now. But me, I see I could go for any of them. Now, if I go for this orange, it could either give me an income of red or yellow. I don't know what. This orange could be give me a red or yellow. Um, unlike a fresco where you can just paint wherever you want, when you're doing this, you have to expand from already painted spots. So these spots were painted at the beginning. As you see, Jen expanded this way. Sometimes, depending on how it's expanded, you have li you're limited in what colors you can use. But right now, I've got access to greens and oranges and purples. So I don't really know which one I want. But I know I have a lot. I just picked up a lot of red, so I probably don't want to get more red income. So maybe I'll just go on ahead and mix these two together to make a green. So, and remember, because this guy's sick, I could only do one. Normally, I'd get to do another mix, but since he's sick, I can only do one. All right, and now my last guy is, he's going to take this green, and I could do this one or this one. I'll do this one, and I now I have yellow paint income, and I just made four points. These are all worth four points. One, two, three, four. Okay. And so that was it for me. Jen's last thing was after she did her mix, she cheered herself back up, got her worker back. And that folks was one full round demonstrating what the wall fresco does. It's a, a great way to score points and a great way to get income. Right. And so now my income at the end of the round is what am I? I'm, at, I'm making two bucks a turn plus one yellow cube. Jen's making three bucks a turn. One, two, three. Plus, and man, this is a big deal early on in the game, plus one purple every turn. Very nice. And let's see, we bought both of the bells. We didn't buy either of these, so these both go away. New medicine's going to come out. Let's see, that's a two and a one. So they go from best to worst. So this two cure costs three. This one cure costs two. And now maybe it's worthwhile to buy the one cure for either Jen or I to cure our one guy because it'll only cost us two bucks. So that's a little bit more attractive than it was last turn. Um, new bells come out. A five for three, but with more actual bell icons. And a seven for five with six bell. Is that six? Yeah. And of course, the market refills like always, and we continue. And um, Leonardo's in last place. Oh wait, oops, I forgot, totally forgot. Leonardo, right? He, what did he do? He got nine points for that big one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So Leonardo's. So I'm in last place. So I get to choose first when waking up. Jen, of course, controls Leonardo this round, and the game continues. And that's it, folks. That is what Fresco Expansion Modules 8, 9, and 10 adds to the game. And now, if you would like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that little I up in the top right corner of the screen in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.